Good evening, Dr. Butts. How you doing? Welcome to the Tabernacle of Praise Worship Center's uh, Tuesday night Bible study. Sister Hatcher, welcome, welcome, Sister Avis. Sister Lisa Sanders, it's good to see you on tonight. How are you? Nikita Kimball. We'll give a few more minutes for some more people to come in. Welcome, Bishop White. How are you this evening? Before we get started on uh, our Bible study lesson for tonight. Sister Mary Thomas, I see you watching. It's good to see you again. While we have time, let's go ahead, click and share. Share this uh, Facebook, our Bible study with your friends um, so that we can have as many people watching tonight that the blessings of the Lord shall just spread abroad um, that the things that God has to say to us tonight can be shared all around the world. Good to see you, Mother White. How are you? Sister Bianca, it's good to see you. All right, people are coming in. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started with Bible study tonight. Um, if you're looking for Tabernacle of Praise Worship Center Tuesday night Bible study, you're in the right place. Uh, I am Minister David Sharp. I'll be facilitating Bible study for the night. Um, Sister Cooper, Barbara Cooper, how are you? Uh, Sister Brown, I'll be facilitating Bible study tonight. And um, just so you know, you're in the right place at the right time. Uh, this is Tabernacle of Praise Worship Center. And tonight's Bible study lesson will be on uh, it'll just be an overview uh, for the next few weeks. We're going to be talking about um, understanding your spiritual seasons, understanding spiritual seasons. Um, as we are approaching the end of summer in about another 35 days or so, we're going to go into the season of fall, then into winter, and then into spring. And as we do this, our physical bodies begin to change. Our physical uh, seasons, even in the natural with the plants and the animals, will begin to change from season to season. But what does that mean about our spiritual body, our spiritual mind? Um, our spiritual mind has uh, goes through seasons as well. And I'm going to highlight the four seasons that we naturally experience. Um, summer, fall, winter, and spring. Um, and then just try to highlight them tonight. And then in the coming weeks, we would delve, we would dig deeper into each one individually. Um, so let us open up with a word of prayer. Gracious Father, we thank you for this time of fellowship. Father, we thank you for this time of just uh, coming together to learn from your word, to teach your word, to learn, to study, to come to a better understanding um, of the seasons and the seasons impact on our lives, both physically and spiritually. Now, Father, we just ask that you will open our eyes and ears to hear from you, remove any obstacle that will be in our way to keep us from giving you all our, to giving you our time and Father for worshiping you in spirit and in truth. Now, God, we thank you in advance for the things you're going to show us this evening. We thank you in advance for the, for the lives that are going to be changed. We thank you in advance for the word that's going to come. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, again, we're talking about our spiritual seasons um, that we go through as just as our bodies and, and the natural world goes through four seasons. Uh, our, our body, our spiritual man goes through seasons as well. I'm going to be coming tonight from the book of Ecclesiastes. I'm going to read the first uh, from chapter three, the first uh, nine verses. Um, but I, I, I won't deal with all of this all at one time. Uh, and I may not deal with all of these individually uh, as they would be shaped into our seasons. Uh, but I will pull them in and out from each individual season as we go through the coming weeks. So as it reads in King James, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away, excuse me, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to keep silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. What profit a man, he that worketh in, the, in that therein, he laboreth. I have seen the travail which God has given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. That was Ecclesiastes chapter three, verse one through 10. Um, and what I wanna pull out of that one for just to start off with is uh, verse two. Uh, verse one and two, to everything there is a season, a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. Well, right now we're in the summer season uh, in a natural sense. It's hot outside. We have the, the, the summer harvest, the things that are growing and, and ready to be harvested in the summertime. And so our summer season in the natural sense, as well as the spiritual sense, consists of steady growth and spiritual, uh, in, in spiritual matters, excuse me, steady growth in spiritual matters. Well, what does that mean? That means in the summer, as our farmers would have you to understand, in the summer, there's a, a, a lot of heat and what's going to be harvested in the summer was either planted in the winter or the early fall. But there's a lot of harvest to come out of the summer. So when we look at what is what we are doing in the summer, we're dealing with the heat, we're dealing with rain, um, the weather can be up and down, but the key thing I want you to focus on is the heat that we're dealing with. It also causes a steady growth. Without the heat, without the rain, there would be no harvest. There's going to have to be a rain and, and heat in every season and every stage of our lives in order for us to grow the way God has intended for us to grow. Understanding our spiritual seasons, uh, the summer. This is a time in the natural that we typically mix work with pleasure. We have, uh, we'll work and we try to squeeze in some time at work to take breaks and to do things where we can get out of the office if we're in the office. Um, and then we have vacations where we get away and we go and enjoy the beach. We go and enjoy the mountains, wherever your vacation of choice is. But we do these things in the natural in, in, in such a way that it becomes a regimen. It becomes yearly that we plan every year to take a nice vacation in the summer, to get away, to relax, to rejuvenate. 
uh, and we come back and we get back to the hustle and bustle of our summer lives. The summer also tells us that it is a time of, of busyness, staying busy. So in our spiritual man, our summer months are, should be that we are busy about our father's business, that we're busy reaping the harvest of the seeds that were sown earlier in the year. We're busy running to and fro for the Father, doing the work of the Father, and doing the work in the ministry that God has called us to. Every season that we go into, we are going to have to have um, a growth in there. Even though we have the other months, we have to grow up in that spiritually so that we can reap the harvest at the end of each season. I want you to understand that yes, there is a harvest at the end of each and every season. Um, as we go through this today, I'll give you some of the some of the things naturally that we can harvest from each season. And, and even our winter season has has a time of harvest where you can uh, pluck the, the things that were planted either in summer or in late uh, in early fall. So. As we go through, we'll see the things that we're harvesting um, and the things that we can that we need to be doing spiritually. Well, in the book of Psalms, chapter one, verse three, we talk about the um, the spiritual growth. For it says that he should be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that whose leaves don't wither and whose fruit uh, produces and due season. And I, I paraphrase that at the end, but it's the thing I want you to look at is in the summer months, we should always be prospering. The summer months, we should always be prospering spiritually and physically because we have to store up naturally for what is to come in the winter months. But in the summer months, a lot of times we just go and we, we're harvesting, we're, we're busy about God's business, but we're not actually storing up for the lean times. And, and that's a spiritual maturity, a spiritual growth, when you know that in the summer, I have to put away for what the winter may come and be. Because if we have a hard winter, I'm not gonna have the harvest in the winter time that I would normally have. That's both physical and that's both spiritual. Um, spiritually, we want to be so spiritually minded that we, we know that our seasons don't always go um, by three month increments spiritually. And they may not go in order of summer, fall, winter, spring. You may go from a summer to a winter. You may go from summer to spring. Fall naturally comes after summer in the natural, but in the spiritual, you can go from season to season and there's no set order and there's no designated time that you're gonna be in that season. But understand this, you will be in that season until God allows you to come out. So summer months, in the summer season, we wanna make sure that we are busy about our father's business, doing everything that we can do because we have more daylight, we have more time, we typically have more energy, we have more everything uh, naturally to do the things that we want to do. So for spiritually, our spirit man should be absorbing everything that God is pouring out in that season, in our summer season, because the things that we get in this season are going to be needed in the next season. They're gonna be helpful and needful in the next season. I'm gonna move on to our fall uh, season and I'll come back and touch on, on summer again a little later. Our spiritual fall season is a sense of urgency. When you look at the natural um, season of fall, I say it's said to be a season of urgency because things are falling off the trees. 
Uh, the leaves are falling, the fruit is falling off the trees. Uh, the animals are naturally gathering and preparing themselves for the winter season. So when you see the fall season or you're in a fall season, then you're in a season of urgency. You need preparedness. You need to be ready to do what God has called you to do at a moment's notice. The urgency is there and you're ready and you're about your father's business because the time is coming when you can't be there, when, when you're not going to have that time and the daylight and the desire to do all those things. So in the fall season, I want to ask you a question because I think about a falling away, a pulling away, um, a letting go of, because when something falls, it has to leave your hand or leave the tree that is on, the branch that is on, and it has to fall. So my question is, in our fall season, what are we holding on to that God wants us to let go of? I'm gonna ask again, what are we holding on to that God wants us to let go of? All the trees, just about all the trees let go of their leaves. And those leaves are for their own good, the good of the tree. The leaves shall fall to the ground and even the fruits of that tree shall fall to the ground. They will be trampled on. They will be mulched up. They will be cut up. Somebody may come along and rake them up. Even when they rake the leaves up, they are also uh, scraping the ground and allowing more air and moisture to get into the ground so that that tree, under, so that tree can get the nourishment and strength that it needs. So what are we holding on to that God wants us to let go of uh, in our fall season? Because our fall season, we have to let go of things. We have to get rid of things. We have to purge. We have to clean, cleanse, because there's another season coming after that. So some examples of things that we might be holding on to, um, relationships that God wants us to let go of. Um, we may be holding on to, um, when I say relationships, I'm saying some, some people that's in our midst that God wants us to let go of. One, we may be the crutch that's keeping them from getting closer to God, although we see ourselves as helping them. Or two, they're just not, their season for being with us is over, it's up. And what do I mean when I say we may be a crutch? Well, if you're always helping the same person with the same situation, at some point, they either have to get it or they don't. And God says, if you keep being their crutch, the one that they go to, then they'll never come to me. So sometimes in our fall season, we have to cut people off. We have to let people go. And guess what? It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, I know it seems hard, but harsh, but it's okay. Um, our fall season, spiritually, we are again taking in all that God has, but we're having to be even more careful with the things that we're doing um, because the abundance of the summer is stored up, should be stored up for the winter. And we have to still add to that abundance from the summer and not start to deplete it. Because if we take away too soon, we won't have enough to make it through the winter. And God does not want us to be in lack. God would not have us to be um, in very needful unless it's our season to be needful. But God wants us to be prosperous and he wants that everything that we do to prosper. So in our fall season, we have to be willing to let go of some things and some people so that we can ourselves grow all the more. Now, along with asking the question of what are we holding on to in our fall season that God wants us to let go of, I will also say that we need to, that is a, it's a good time in our fall season to 
work on some other relationships. Um, relationships that, like our marriages, we work on our marriages in the fall season because all summer long we've been busy running, working, gathering, storing up, vacationing, in the, in the natural vacationing, staying busy. So now in the fall, it's a good time to work on our relationships first with God, then our marriages, our children, our families, and, and whatever relationships that God would have us to nurture. But remember, every relationship you have was not meant to ride with you all the way to the end. Some of these relationships are going to have to fall off because that dead weight will hold you down and hold you back and will keep you from, from getting to your due season at the appointed time that God would have you to be there. So the scripture says, do not grow weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So now we are looking at our fall season. And in the fall, again, I say that our fall season is a time for letting go of things. Um, when I ask, what, what are we holding on to that God wants us to let go of? Again, that could be a grudge that we've been holding for 20 years. Yeah, I, I, I talk to a lot of people and I understand that things that happen to us are real and they hurt us. But God doesn't want us to hold on to that for 10, 20, 30 years. We can't grow the way God wants us to grow if we continue to hold on to it. So God gave us a season of fall to allow us to let go to get rid of those things, to purge, to cleanse, so that we can grow the way God has designed for us to grow. Those things that hurt you were meant to hurt you one time, not for the rest of your life. They were not meant to haunt you for the rest of your life. They, were, they hurt you when they hurt you. And now we have to somehow get past it through the grace of God, through prayer and through through loving kindness and God's tender mercies, we can get past it and we can begin to grow because out of your pain, there is a gain. Out of your hurt, there is a healing. We have to understand that we're not, we're not meant to hold on to those things. They hold us back while the person that, that hurt us is moving on and don't even realize maybe they, that, that they even hurt us. So fall season, Let's let go of some things and let's grab a hold to what God wants us to hold on to. And let's nurture the things that God wants us to nurture and let go of what God doesn't want us to have. And so from fall, we roll over into the winter season. In the natural, we think of winter and we think of rest. Winter is a season of peace and rest. We have shorter days, longer nights. We have um, cooler temperatures in the day and colder temperatures at night. There's less daylight, less time that we're gonna be out trying to enjoy uh, the things of the world. The winter season is seen as peace and rest. In the natural, animals begin to hibernate in the winter, resting. And if we are smart, we would take the same cue. It's okay to go and hibernate. Hibernate from the ways of the world. Hibernate from the hustle and bustle of the summer and the fall. So we can be strengthened, rejuvenated, revived for the next season that is to come. Remember again, Every season that you go into is preparing you for the next season. There's, there's, you will never be in a season uh, that is just for that season. That God doesn't work like that. God never blesses one person and one person only. Uh, for when God blesses me, he's blessing my whole house. So when God pre is preparing me, prepare, meaning beforehand, then he takes me through this season that is going to prepare me and put me in the right place for the next season. And again, remember, 
our seasons do not have to go in order winter, summer, spring, fall. Winter, spring, summer, fall, excuse me. They can go however God designs them to go. And so we have to understand that while we are in our winter season, we should not resist the rest that God wants us to get. The ground is at rest. The ground does produce fruit or a crop, I'll say, uh, in the winter. Because again, I said there is a harvest at the end of every season. And so, yes, the ground does produce uh, a harvest in the winter. But the harvest for the winter is nothing compared to the harvest for the summer. Spring and fall's harvest are about equal. And I'll even tell you that the same things, the same crops are harvested in the spring and in the fall. But in the winter, you have to have things that can withstand the cold weather, um, the, long, the long cold weather of being in the ground, colder than what uh, most crops would, would survive in. Um, so we need to be able to buckle down, hibernate, because we filled up during summer and fall so that we can be able to rest throughout the winter and yet still have more than enough or sufficient to get us not just to the next season but through the next season because at the end of this we're gonna we're gonna get a harvest we're going to reap a harvest in in the book of uh revelations uh not revelations i'm sorry in the book of genesis um, chapter 8, verse 22, it reads, while the earth remain, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. So while we're in the earth, we're going to have all these seasons, and God wants us to prosper in every one of them. God wants us to be fruitful. He wants us to prosper. He wants us to multiply in every season that we're in. And it's very doable. And it's even, I'm not going to say it's easy because that would be making light of it. It's, it's very doable. You're going to have some tough times, but your tough times should never outweigh your good times. Your, your, the times when things were good and easy. See, back in the summer when everything was going good and everything was flowing right, everything was coming in that you needed, um, that's the time when typically we get away from God because everything's going well for us naturally. That's the time we typically kind of fade away from God. Um, and I, I've been in church long enough to know that um, even in membership wise, there is a rise and fall in um, church membership uh, or church attendance throughout the year based on the seasons. Um, again, summer months, you've got a lot of people traveling. Attendance is down. Winter months, you're home a lot more. Attendance comes up. So in our summer season, we have to prepare for our winter season. Now in the winter season, we're preparing for the summer season. So our winter season is gonna bring about a lot of rest because God wants us to rest up so that we can be ready to run when the summer hits. Yeah, I know we gotta get through the spring first, but spring will rejuvenate us that much more. When we come out of a cold spell and get the first touch of warm weather, Everybody perks up physically, naturally, and spiritually. We perk up in the in the winter time. God wants us to think about or or to think on Him and allow Him to pour into us dreams and visions, so that we can begin the process of planting new seeds, the seed of the vision that God gave us to uh, be an entrepreneur, the seed of, of 
home ownership, the seed of children going off to school, the seed of empty nesters, the seed of um, just being better stewards over the things that God has given us. All those seeds should be planted in a time when the earth is at rest, we are resting so that they can take root and have the proper timing so that when God calls for those things to come forth, they're going to come forth and we're gonna have the energy to harvest them in their own season, in the right season. We don't have the energy and the time to have a great harvest in the winter months. Why do you say that? Because it gets dark early. It starts getting dark around five o'clock. The sun comes up in the morning around six o'clock or seven o'clock sometimes. Your window of daylight, which is when we should be busy doing the work, gets closed up. So we don't have the, the, the window of opportunity that we have in the summer months. What am I saying? Spiritually, when we get into a spiritual winter, we get into a downtime. When we should be drawing closer to God, a lot of times we get into that, that woe is me, um, I'm not hearing from God, um, God's not talking. I want you to understand something. God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He doesn't change. God was with you when you were reaping your greatest harvest. He's going to be with you when you're at your lowest point. He's right by your side. He's inside of you. We're looking at everywhere and everything to find God when all we have to do is look inside of our own selves. And we will find God. He's there. So in our winter season, we should be planning and making plans of the summer, the coming season. I'm not going to say the summer, but the coming season. We should be making plans for the coming season that whatsoever season comes after this, there's going to be a bountiful harvest. Because naturally spring comes, but God may send us from winter back to fall. But there's still a great harvest to come because God has taken the time. We have taken the time to meditate with God, to meditate on God's word, to get to, to be able to separate uh, truth from fact. We've, we've been able to get in the word of God and come to a better understanding of what God wants for us. Understanding our spiritual seasons. And so we are in a winter season. That's the time that we should really draw nigh unto God so that he can draw nigh unto us and open our spiritual eyes to see and hear what he has for us. That's when we get the vision. And then we run with the vision. We begin to make preparation for that vision so that in due season, we can run with it. The winter season. That pushes us into our fourth season, which is spring. Spring is newness of life. In the spring, we are full of energy because we're tired of being wrapped up and bundled up in, in clothes we want to get, we can get a little freedom. We can take the jacket off. We can, you know, carry a light jacket and not have the coat. Um, we feel free in the spring. It's the first taste of the, of, of warm season. The first taste of a new crop that was planted three to six months ago. And even, even naturally, we get the birds come back out singing every day. We have the squirrels running around it, all the animals come back and begin to do naturally what they are called to do. We have to be the same, uh, just like the animals. When spring comes, we begin to be more vigilant and busy about our father's business. I don't want to say that in the winter, we're not busy about his business, but we have to have a season of rest so that we can prepare for the rest of the year. So if we get that season of rest in the winter, 
then that's enough to rejuvenate us to get through spring, to get through summer, and to get through fall. Now, a bear will eat in the fall enough food to last him um, for three, four, five months, depending on the location of where they are, and they hibernate and don't eat anymore. We should be able to store up from our very bountiful months for the lean month, months of winter so that as we go through the lean months, we still have something to pull from, something to hold on to, something to encourage us, another scripture to encourage us, another script, another uh, person in our lives to encourage us. We encourage them. You know, that's that's when we should be, I would say, more close knit and drawn closer together because we don't have all this busyness going on that the other months would bring to us. So spring, spring is full of life. It's a new beginning for us. And, and just a new zest and zeal for life, an unstoppable feeling when you are in a spiritual spring, you feel like you can do anything. You just got up, feel like you just got up from uh, the best sleep you've had. Now you're ready to go and tackle the world. Well, that's our spring season. Spring means we have more bounce in our body. We have more oomph about what we're doing. Spring says we're going to spring forward. We're going to be all about this. And we come out of the winter into the spring with so much fervor and fire and energy because we've been, we've had the time to rest. Flowers are blossoming. So are the, flower, the spiritual flowers that we have. The things that we have been nurturing through the winter are now blooming and blossoming, blossoming in our spring season. So we've had a, a little, I've had a little, little dialogue there about the fourth season. Now I just want to go back. I want to read a couple of scriptures for you. Um, I, I read, uh, I quoted you Hebrews 13 and 8. that says Jesus Christ is the same today and yesterday and forever. So no matter what season you're in, Jesus is in there with you. And yes, he will be there to carry us through it. Um, because he wants us more than anything to get to the end, to reap that harvest. It's not about and I'm talking harvest, I'm not talking money all the time. We're not always talking about storing up food, or having houses and land and all that, but a harvest is simply uh, the, the benefit of the seeds that you have sown. If you sow into um, a certain ministry, and there's a, at a point in time, you need to harvest something from that ministry. If you've been sowing into the tabernacle, you should be harvesting something out of the tabernacle. If you've been sowing into your job, you should be harvesting something out of your job. Sowing into your family, you should be harvesting something out of your family. What you sow, so shall you reap. So be careful what we're sowing in these seasons because those things are going to come back. Those things are going to come back. Now, there are a couple of things about sowing that I want to mention before I get to some scriptures. Uh, number one, you reap what you sow. You reap what you sow. Number two, you reap more than you sow. You sow seeds for an apple tree. And that apple tree is producing fruit year after year after year. You reap more than you sow. Number three, you reap where you sow. You reap where you sow. So if you're sowing in good ground, you should be expecting a harvest. Bishop's uh, thing is expected to exceed because he's sowing into fertile ground, then he expects a harvest. A harvest means you're 
exceeding. You, that means you're growing. That means you're, you're planning the right things and your crop is coming up. And then fourth, you reap other than you sow. And what that means is you planted an apple tree. You reap the apples from it. The apples can then turn into a profit for you financially if you sell the apples. Um, the apples can also be more than just becoming a fruit for you, uh, for you to eat. You can also be a blessing and give to other families. So you're going to reap other than you sow. And I, I use the apple tree because I used to have one um, when I was a, a young kid. And we had an apple tree in the backyard. And that apple tree every year would kick out green apples. They were never supposed to turn red. Some of the best apples I've had um, outside of a Granny Smith green apple. Um, but that apple tree would put out apples every year, every year, every year. And my parents would make us uh, go and pluck the good ones. We had to learn which, which apples were good. Uh, pluck them off the tree at the right time. Uh, some would fall off and hit the ground. We would have to pick them up. But we would take them and give them to the neighbors um, because some of the neighbors uh, were not as fortunate as we were growing up. So we would take them and give them to the neighbors. Um, we would, mom would, would can some and we would have them later on. And there would be apple pies coming and going. Um, but we reaped other than what we sowed. Um, and, and then the ones that fell to the ground and rotted, uh, they were still useful for that tree. They got trampled on, they got squished up, they got put back down into the, to the soil. The same soil that helped produce it, it is now putting nourishment back into that soil so that it can help produce another crop. And it's an endless cycle over and over and over. Nature will take care of itself. We need to be able to take care of ourselves spiritually to the point to where we are just reproducing over and over and over just as nature would do. So um, I have another scripture here. I just lost my computer over here. It, it, uh, I clicked it off by accident, so it's not going to come back up. So now in our, in our scriptures, we have, or in, in our text here, where I'm coming from out of Ecclesiastes chapter three, verse one, to everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. We have to understand our purpose while we're in that season. Um, the seasons of, of plentiful, we have to understand our purpose. Now, I'm going to tell you, we got about 15 minutes, 16 minutes left. I'm going to go back and I'm going to start talking about some of the natural fruits and, and crops that grow up in our different seasons. In the summer, you have a multitude of crops that grows from fruits, apples, oranges. These are the times that they are harvested. Uh, grapes, you have corn, beans. Um, you name it, almost everything can be harvested in the summer. Um, and that's when, like I said before, we're very busy taking in the things that God has blessed us with, the things that the greatest harvest comes in the summer months of our spiritual walk. Our greatest harvest will come in the summer months. Um, there are just naturally more things that's going to grow and produce than what we will find in any other season. But understand this, you shall have a harvest in every season. There is not a season that goes by that you come out of that you do not get a harvest. What your harvest is, is dependent upon how you handle the season when you're going through it. The decisions you make while you're in your season will determine what you harvest when you come out of your season. So 
in the summer, we got corn. We even, we even harvest cotton uh, in the summer, which is for making clothes and, and, and other things. We harvest apples, we harvest fruit, we harvest beans, we harvest everything. A lot, most things are harvested in the summer months. So when we are in our summer months, we got this great harvest, we store it up. In the spring and in the fall, you're gonna harvest basically the same things. Um, in the spring, you will harvest carrots, lettuce, beets. Uh, you can harvest um, cabbage, broccoli, things of that nature that can withstand being in the ground during the winter season of the cold and, and wet cold and can, can sustain themselves in the heat summer uh, seasons of still yet being in the ground. So it's a very durable, they're very durable uh, harvest items. Now, what does that say about us spiritually? Spiritually, we should be harvesting those things that were planted three to six months ago. Well, what was planted six months ago in your life? What were you thinking and, and what was God speaking into your life six months ago? Because Fall is about to come upon us. And whatever was planted in spring is about to come to harvest at the end of fall or sometime in fall. So we're not as busy in those times of the year. So I, I would liken lettuce to be like a new job or just a promotion on your job. It may not be the biggest promotion, but you planted those seeds back in the spring and you nurtured those seeds, you've done the things that the job has called you to do, but more importantly, you've done what God has called you to do. And when God calls you to, to, to do something, he wants us to do it with the zeal and fervency and, and fire that, that Paul did. Uh, Paul was on fire. We need to be on fire. Um, and then with our winter season, to my surprise, when I looked it up, you get what is called a winter cabbage, a winter lettuce. Um, you get, uh, again, beets, because all of these things can withstand the coldness of the ground. Spiritually, those cold things in our lives that we don't like to deal with, the things that cause us to have to work that much harder on to get them to, to come to pass, to, to get it to perfection, spiritually speaking. Um, sometimes that may be things like our faith. Uh, Pastor just talked about faith for, for eight weeks or so. And so talking about our faith in the wintertime, uh, how we should be still yet holding on to God's hand, even though things are seemingly getting lean and not as, as prosperous as before. Uh, the, the earlier months. So our faith walk can be challenged in our winter season, but yet it needs to be harvested because our faith walk can never be put to the wayside. You have to hold strong to your faith no matter what comes, no matter what goes. Your faith is that is that important. What are some of the other things that we struggle with in the winter time? Um, financials, finances. We can struggle with our finances in the wintertime because we did not store up in the summer when things were rolling good. Um, so financially, uh, we start to pull back on sometimes paying our tithes and, and giving an offering um, because we don't feel like we have sufficient enough. Again, that's when we have to work on our relationship, draw nigh unto God, and he'll draw nigh unto us and let God direct us in how we should manage not just our finances, but all of our affairs. Uh, relationships start to fall apart in the winter time because we're not as excited about things as we normally would be. Relationships, not just our relationship with our spouse, our children, but our relationship with God suffers during the winter months because we just, for, naturally, we go to work, we come home, it's dark, and we decide our bodies don't want to do what what we want them to do or what they did three months ago, six months ago. So in this, 
we have to understand that we're going to have some tough times. Every season cannot be your best season. We're going to have some times in our winter when we want to give up because it's tough, it's difficult, it's dark, it's cold. But we can't give up. We have to hold to God's unchanging hand. In our, in our summertime, opposite of our winter, we can't get so busy and get so puffed up on ourselves that we forget about God. That we think that we did all of this and, and, and understanding that God actually did it. It wasn't us. It was God. God brought us through it. God brought us to it. God's going to take care of us all the way to the end. So in the summer, we still need to draw close to God in everything that we do. We need to draw close to God. We need to, to work on, on all these things because another time is coming when we need to be able to do what the things that God wants us to do. And we got to have the energy, the strength, and we got to be able to do it. So in this season, the, the, whatever season you're in right now, and this was an overview of the four seasons. I hope that it helped you understand what season you were in so that you can understand how or what to do in the season to receive the harvest that God has in store for you. There is a harvest at the end of every season. Now, I'm going to say that several more times throughout the coming weeks. There is a harvest at the end of every season and and Preferably, we will see that throughout the scriptures, no matter what season you're in. So whatever season you're in right now, I just want to just want you to take a moment to think about the season you're in. If you're in the summer season and everything is going well in your life, remember God. Remember to put God first. Keep God in the forefront of all your thoughts. That's going to make your summer season that much more profitable. If you're in a fall season, consider the things that God wants you to let go of. Consider the things that God wants you to pull away from. And then let them go. Trust in God that God is going, that God knows what he's doing better than we know what we're doing. Because we really don't understand what God is doing. We have to trust that God is doing what's best for us. It may not look good always. It may not feel good always. And I can promise you that it's not going to always feel good, look good, smell good, or sound good. But the one thing I will say is this. If you keep your eyes on the prize, if you keep your eyes on God, no matter your circumstance, no matter your situation, you will come out better than you went in. If you're in the uh, winter season, it's a time of resting, reflection, and, and peace. Draw closer to God. Understand what God's vision is for your life. Understand what God's uh, vision is for your future, for your family. Whatever it is that, that you are working on with God right now, you need to get all that information so that you can begin to prepare to set that up. Do the footwork now for what is to come in the future months, because if God gave it to you, it shall come to pass. If you're in the uh, spring, you're excited about everything and you're ready to run, run, run. Run the good race, finish the course. Don't just run to be running, but run with a purpose. And your purpose is God. Your purpose is fulfilling God's vision, fulfilling the dream that God has given you. Run with a purpose and then receive your harvest at the end. It's not, it's not gonna be easy always. Even though you're very energetic right now, you're very excited right now, those are the times where you have to be that much more careful because you're more apt to make a mistake because you're so excited that you overlook something and that thing that you overlook can come back to haunt you. So while we're excited about the spring, still be watchful, still be mindful of everything. 
but still go, go after God with everything you got because the seeds you plant today are on good soil are going to come up in your spring, I mean, in your summer or in your fall. And I promise you, you will not be let down by God. You will not be let down by God. God's promises are yea and amen. And God will always stand up to his end of the bill. It's we have to stand up to our end. Every time we see a scripture in the Bible where God made a promise about something he gave also prior to that said the things that we needed to do in order for him to do what he was going to do. The covenant. If my people who are called by my name in order for God to heal the land and forgive sins, had to go through that whole process. But we have to understand that if that's the process God wants us to go through, I'm going to go through it, even though it may be burdensome, it may be heavy at times. I'm going to go through it, and I'm going to reap the harvest on the other side. Well, by my clock, it is 7.57, and is drawing nigh to the end of our one hour Bible study for tonight. Uh, I, I hope and I pray that um, you have gotten an overview of the four seasons and, and next coming weeks, we will dig deeper into each one and get better clarity of them. Uh, but I'm, I hope that you have at least identified what season you're in right now. And as we go through the, the four seasons, you'll be able to see that you were in that season for a while. You were in that season for a while. Um, and so you're going to have another season coming after this. But remember this, our spiritual seasons are not based on three months. And our spiritual seasons will always end with a harvest. It will always end with a harvest. Because one day we're going to be planting. And while we're planting our seeds, we're going to also start to reap the harvest of them. For the scripture says, and the reaper shall overtake the sower. So when I'm sowing a seed, somebody can be coming behind me and reaping the harvest. The time it hits the ground and I move away from it, somebody's coming behind me and plucking it up. And it's a harvest. So as we go into our close, um, it's now time for our offering. So I'm asking that you all would now take out your cell phone, uh, log into our web page on the internet and, and make an offering. What, what we are off, the, our offering is, is real easy and simple. Uh, you can go to uh, our website, www.thetpwc.org and scroll down a little bit, click on the donate button and you can donate there uh, for an offering. You can also donate on our cash app uh, through Cash App, which is dollar sign T H E T P W C and the number one. That's dollar sign V T P W C and the number one. And just ask now that you take the time, take a few minutes to go ahead and, and send us your donation. Um, you know that uh, if you know that where you're sending a donation is, is fertile ground, then send your donation to fertile ground. Because uh, I believe, and the tabernacle believes, that we're going places and we're doing things in the name of the Lord. And we, we know that our harvest is just around the corner. Um, I, I pray that as we, one thing I, I forgot to mention, um, whatever season you're in, COVID cannot mess up your season. Stay in God. COVID cannot mess up your season. The president can't mess up your season. Only we can mess up our season. Now, we also have uh, our scholarship fund is called HOPE, H-O-P-E, Helping Others Through Education. And if you want to donate to HOPE, you can donate to HOPE uh, online through our uh, webpage uh, or, and just type in the comment section, H-O-P-E. And that month, those monies will be sent directly to our scholarship fund. Uh, and you can do the same thing with Cash App, the same Cash App, VTPWC1, um, and just type in HOPE uh, under the sign, the uh, heading for four, and that money will go directly to uh, our scholarship fund, where in due season, we'll be doing great things for, for the, the young people 
with scholarship and, and opportunities uh, to help other people go to school. And if you uh, want to learn more about hope, you can uh, go back to Bishop White's uh, Expected to Exceed um, series, I believe back in late May, early June. And you can uh, listen to the uh, interview that he did with Sister Sharp, my wife, uh, as to how hope was birthed in her heart. Um, and you can uh, find out on our Facebook page as well, I believe. So at this time, I'm just asking that you go ahead and send your donations in, send, send your, uh, your offering in. And while you're doing that, we're going to go ahead and pray. Uh, gracious Father, we thank you for this time of fellowship. Father, we thank you for uh, understanding our spiritual seasons and where we are right now in them. Now, Father, I just ask that you will, begin, that you will continue to open our eyes and ears and understanding, our heart of understanding that we will understand what thus says the Lord. Now, Father, we bless this offering uh, that has come in, that it may uh, be fruit for our house, fruit for not just our house, Father, but fruit for the, for the people around us, fruit for the community, that in due season we shall uh, reap the harvest that you have planted uh, for us, that we have planted, Father, and that you have nurtured and watered and caused for the increase. Now, God, we thank you. We love you. We adore you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, it's a little after eight, and I just want to say thank you for your time. Thank you for tuning in to Tabernacle of Praise Worship Center's Bible study. Um, it has been a pleasure to come to you tonight, and I look forward to seeing you again uh, either on Sunday at church or next Tuesday night right here at the tab. Thank you so much, and have a wonderful night. Be blessed. Bye-bye.